Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Genesis 32, 12. Whoops, a little too quick there. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good. And the whole verse says, For you said, I will surely treat you well, and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Let's go up here. Um, okay, we'll start in verse 6. Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he is also coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and herds and camels, into two companies. And he said, If Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. Do you notice what he just did? <clears throat> he just reminded God of his word. He just reminded God of one of his promises. Was it reminding God? No, it was reminding him. He was reminding himself. So this is a good thing to do. It's in the Bible. Verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. Perfect statement. Amazing statement. None of us are worthy of it. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. For you said, I will surely treat you well, and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he lodged there that same night, and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau, his brother, two hundred female goats and twenty male goats, over two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milk camels with their colts, forty cows and ten bulls, twenty female donkeys and ten foals. Then he delivered them to the hand of his servants, Every drove by itself and said to his servants, Pass over before me and put some distance between successive droves. And he commanded the first one, saying, When Esau my brother meets you and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong and where are you going? Whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my lord Esau, and behold, he is also behind us. And so he commanded the second third. It, just, it goes on to this whole scenario that was unfolding, unfolding before them. But you see what was going on there. He was reminding God of the promises God made. This is throughout the Old and New Testament. The devotion says, When Jacob was on the other side of the brook at Jabbok, and Esau was coming with armed men, he earnestly sought God's protection. And as a master reason, he pleaded, And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good. Oh, the force of that plea. He was holding God to his word. Thou saidest. The attribute of God's faithfulness is a splendid horn of the altar to lay hold upon. But the promise, which has in it the attribute and something more, is a yet mightier hold fast. Thou saidest, I will surely do thee good. And has he said, and shall he not do it? Of course he will. Let God be true and every man a liar. Shall not he be true? Shall he not keep his word? Shall not every word that cometh out of the lips stand fast and be fulfilled? Amen. Solomon, at the opening of the temple, used this same mighty plea. He pleaded with God to remember the word which he had spoken to his father, David, and to bless that place. When a man gives a promissory note, his honor is engaged. He signs his hand, and he must discharge it when the due time comes or else he loses credit. It shall never be said that God dishonors his bills. Did you know there was a time in history in, in multiple countries where, and, and this is where we get our, you know, making deals on handshakes. There's land deals in Texas that are still brokered by handshakes. A man's honor is his, his word is his honor. His honor is his word. But there was a time in history when if you went back on your word after making a handshake with somebody, after making that agreement, that hand got cut off if you went against it. And so when people saw you missing a hand, they knew they couldn't trust you because you didn't keep your word. But if you had both hands, you could be trusted. Very interesting. 
It shall never be said that God dishonors his bills. The credit of the Most High never was impeached, and never shall be. He is punctual to the moment. He never is before his time, but he never is behind it. Search God's word through and compare it with the experience of God's people, and you shall find the two daily, from the first to the last. Many a hoary patriarch has said with Joshua, Not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. How much more can we say that now in this day and age, after having all of biblical history at our fingertips? All are come to pass. If you have a divine promise, you need not plead it with an if. You may urge it with certainty. The Lord meant to fulfill the promise, or he would not have given it. God does not give his words merely to quiet us and to keep us hopeful for a while, with the intention of putting us off at the last, but when he speaks, it is because he means to do as he has said. Father, we come before you this evening to plead some of your promises back to you. You said, if we believe, we shall be saved. Lord Jesus, you said these words too. If you believe, you shall be saved. If we walk in your statutes, we shall prosper. If we do your will, we shall be glorified. Today, we hardly ever hear anybody mentioning these things in great detail. Today, we hardly ever hear anybody talking about this. Well, Father, tonight we pray these promises back to you. You said, if we believe, we shall be saved. We believe you. You said, if we watch, he will return for us. You said, we shall be taken away from the hour of trial. You said, we shall not go through tribulation. It's not for us. There is therefore thou no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You said we shall stand before you in heaven. Lord Jesus, you said to him who overcomes, and you gave a slew, a litany of promises. And we pray these words back to you, but not to remind you, but to remind us. We know you're going to do that, and we know that you love it when we pay attention to your word, because when we pray it back to you, it shows we're watching, shows we're paying attention, shows we're interested. And I know that it pleases you for us to do that, and so we'll do that tonight. Pray your word back to you. We believe you when you say you're going to come and save us and remove us, that you're going to come a second time, apart from sin, for salvation, for those eagerly waiting for you. I pray that we are eagerly waiting for you. And though we are, just like Jacob said, though we are not worthy of any of these things, of any of your mercy, of any of your grace, we're not worthy of anything you have given us. We thank you that you have given this to us. And we thank you that you have given us the more sure word, promises in writing, that you most certainly will fulfill. You most certainly will keep. We can trust that. We can believe that. We can believe you and trust you for that. So we believe your word. We trust your word. Make us to believe and trust more. Make us to be doers of your word. And make us to remember your promises, especially in the times where we're struggling, but even though in the times that we're not struggling. And to pray these promises back. Lord, you said this. We believe you. We believe you and ask that you fulfill your word concerning each one of us. We thank you, Father, that we have that. We thank you that you gave these promises and that you fully intend to keep them. There is no if, there is yes, when. It's going to happen. What an encouragement. What a wonderful hope we have. The rest of the world has no hope because they have no guarantees. We have guarantees in you. Promises in you. Blessings beyond measure. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have these wonderful promises to encourage us and to keep us moving forward. To give us something to look forward to. To give us hope. To give us a light at the end of the tunnel. You are that light. And so we bless you this evening. And we thank you. We are thankful beyond thankfulness. That no matter what this world does. No matter what man does. 
if we believe your promises, if we believe your word, we shall do well. Because that's what you told us would happen. May your will be done in all things regardless. May your will be done in all people. And may you be blessed and glorified beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you can believe the promises of God. You can pray those promises back. Lord, this is what you said. Make me to believe it. Make me to trust it. Make me to watch for it. And we see an example right here in the Bible of that very thing happening. Jacob praying the promises of God back to him. Lord, this is what you said. I'm going to hold myself to your word. That your word is true, that I can trust it. We can trust it. We can trust him. What else do we have? Nothing. And so as the time winds down, as the world is doing its thing and everything it can to get as far away from God as possible, we're just growing closer to him. The, the further away they try to run, surprisingly, and, 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 not, and not surprisingly, they just get closer to him because the time of his wrath is upon us. It's almost time for... The single worst time this earth has ever seen in human history will befall the earth and everyone who dwells in it. The earth dwellers will have to deal with this. And luckily we're not earth dwellers because he made a promise. We would not have to endure such things. Oh, we'll have trials and tribulations throughout our normal lives. That's normal for being a Christian. But we do not take part in the wrath of God. We are not under that condemnation. We are not under wrath. Bible makes this very clear. These are more of the promises of God, and since he made those promises, we'll believe him. That's why we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. We believe the Bible. We believe what it says. It's very simple. And so let us hold God to his promises. And I say that in the sense of we are holding ourselves accountable. We're holding ourselves accountable to read the word, to understand his word, and in one way, lesser or more, to know what his word says and believe it and walk in that belief walk in that faith in that trust in him leaving it all to him knowing that we can't achieve anything we can't establish ourselves we can't grow or climb up or elevate only he can do that and he, he will do that for us because he said he would he said he would glorify us and so we trust him for that and all other things so remind yourself of that it's a great encouragement Remind yourself, declare it, and believe, and it will be fulfilled. The greatest level of faith you can show is that against all odds, you still stand in faith. Even when the woman, talking about the, even the little dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table, Jesus flat out told her, you're not getting anything. And she was like, but even we eat the crumbs. And he was like, you know what? That's pretty good faith. Even though I completely rejected her, she still stood in faith. That's real faith. That even when it seems like everything is against us, we still believe. We still stand in faith. And so let us believe this word today. God provided us this word for a reason. He knew how bad it was going to be. He knew how hard it was going to be to have faith now. Make yourself familiar with the word. Familiar with those promises. Mark them. Write them down. Put them in a book. Organize them in, in for specific purposes. And then... Go back and review them. Go back and look at them. Go back and pray them back to the Father. Watch what happens. I think you'll be amazed. Astonished. And very comforted. Because it'll show you that you are his son. You are his daughter. And he is caring for you. In every way that he said he would. And he's doing that for all of us. It is such a beautiful thing. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.